So can you take a guess as to which hiking boots I chose for my thousand mile trek on the Pacific Crest Trail this summer? In case you haven't been here in a while or you're new to my channel, I'm going to be hiking a thousand miles through Washington and Oregon this summer on the Pacific Crest Trail. And I tried out every single one of these hiking shoes and boots to find out which ones I wanted to take on the long haul with me. So if you love to hike, if you love to backpack, if you're looking for shoes and you want, don't know the difference between a a hiking boot and a low hiking boot and a trail runner you might want to stay tuned because I'm going to talk about each one of these and stay tuned to the very end because I'm going to tell you which ones won out and are going on the Pacific Crest Trail with me hey friendlies I'm Carolyn and welcome back to my RV life and today is all about footwear not only am I gonna kind of talk about all of the different styles of shoes and hiking boots that I tested for my Pacific Crest Trail hike I'm also gonna talk about my socks I'm gonna talk about foot care and my favorite socks and all kinds of stuff but before I get started on that and for those of you who might be new to my channel I feel like I need to explain a little bit because why am I talking about hiking and through hiking and backpacking if this is Carolyn's RV life well Three years ago, three and a half years ago, I decided to give up my life in the Bay Area and move it into an RV so that I could be free to do the things I love to do. And that's more hiking, more traveling. And because I live in an RV, I'm now able to take three months and section hike the Pacific Crest Trail and in the Pacific Crest Trail in Oregon and Washington. So that's that's it in a nutshell. <laughs> this is my RV life because my RV life is about uh, affording me the opportunity, the freedom, and not having to dump a whole money, a bunch of money into mortgage or rent. I can live relatively inexpensively so that I can do the things that I love. Okay, so welcome to my channel if you are new. Now, when I hiked the John Muir Trail in 2015, I wore full-on hiking boots, Solomon GTX something or other, full-on ankle hiking boots because that's what I had always worn and I felt like I needed the ankle support and the support of a heavy boot and, and everything that goes into wearing a heavy boot and they were fine. I, you know, now that I'm preparing for my second big hike, I realize more things than I I'm 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 kind of learning from my John Muir trail in preparing for this hike if that makes sense. Like things I didn't think about on the trail or even since the trail, I am now starting to think about and consider in ways that I hadn't before. I don't know if that makes any sense. What I realize now that I don't think I realized then is how heavy those boots were. I think that impacted a lot of my comfort on the trail. I was exhausted, I was tired. There's also a lot about nutrition. And stay tuned, be sure to subscribe if you wanna hear what I learned about nutrition and how I'm preparing differently for the Pacific Crest Trail as far as nutrition goes. Cause I learned a lot about how to feed my muscles, endurance training and things like that. And wearing a heavy boot, some say that every pound on your feet is equivalent to five pounds on your back. I don't know that I ever believed that, but now I'm starting to think there might be some truth in that. <laughs> so let's start there. That's what I wore on the John Muir Trail, heavy duty Solomon ankle deep boots. And I thought, you know what? I need boots. I need the ankle support. But of course, everybody, the big rage right now are trail runners. And the more I saw reviews about trail runners and people who went from boots to trail runners, I started thinking, you know, all right, something lightweight and airy, that might really help my hiking. And so I got these on sale. These are Solomon's and they are trail runners. I got them on sale for like 100, they were $150 shoes, and I thought, okay, I'll try these. And I have to say, I do love how light they are. They have good traction. See, they've got really good traction, so they've got almost like a boot-like traction. But in the end, this is not enough support for me. If you've been watching my training hikes, you know that I've been rolling my ankles, I've had some foot problems, and I think that I still need the structure of a boot. Something that's gonna hold my foot in place better. Cause look at this has a mesh upper. Foot is just not gonna be held in place. Look at, I mean, that's just very floppy. And I, you know, one other thing I wanna bring up, a lot of the through hikers in general are half my age and probably half my weight. <laughs> Honestly, maybe not quite half, probably, you know. Um, 
you know, so a lot of the through hikers that I'm seeing rat, rant and rave about trail runners are literally like in their 20s and I'm in my 50s and they're 100, 120 pounds and I'm 180 pounds, you know? And then you add a pack to my weight. I add, I'm 180, I add a 35 pound pack that puts me at what, 215. I don't know if trail runners are meant for that much weight over miles and miles and miles and miles of hiking. For those reasons, I just don't think that trail runners are right for me on the trail. The second pair of boots I tried are these Merrell's Vibram. And I have to say, I really, really like these. I won these. I applied for a through hiking grant through Merrill, and it was like a Merrill through hiking grant. I think that's what it was called. I applied and I won. So not only did I get a free pair of boots, but they gave me a stipend to help purchase gear for my trip, which is very generous. And I gotta be honest, this is my first pair of Merrells. I don't know why I had had a mental block about Merrells. I really like these boots. Um, I ordered them, oh, that's another thing. I ordered them a size bigger. I ordered 11 women's. And when you are doing a long hike, long backpacking trip, they always recommend you go up in boot size a half to a full size. I went up a full size in these and they're actually a little bit big and I have to wear double socks. But if I continue to wear them long term on the trail, my feet might swell into them and they might be fine. But right now I have to wear double socks. What I love about these is the toe box. It's got such a big roomy toe box on here. And if anybody has ever done a lot of backpacking, you know how important that is because when you're going downhill with 30, 35, 40 pounds on your back and you're going uh, 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 into your boot, it causes a lot of nail problems. In fact, I lost my two big toe nails on the John Muir Trail because my Solomon toe box was terrible and maybe they were a terrible fit. I don't know, you learn. Every time you do a long hike, you learn something. So that, I love that about these Merrells. The toe box is very roomy. Actually, these are really, really wide too. Not really wide, but they're wide and I have a wide foot and I think maybe that's why I, oh, I went a whole size up because a lot of times they're too tight for me in the width, but I usually wear a 10. I probably could have gone with a 10 and a half on these instead of 11 because they're roomy, they're comfortable. I love these boots. However, what, what, what I'm concerned about as far as a long distance hike is that, and I could have gotten any boots I wanted, but I decided to, since I already had bought my oboes, my ankle boots, I decided I would go ahead and try a low profile hiking boot just to see how they do, to see if I could get away with something lighter. And I don't know, I might end up having these sent to me on the second half of my trail. I, I, we'll see, we'll see how my feet feel, but I might go ahead and have these sent to me on the second half of the trail uh, and try these out because I do love these. I love how lightweight they are and kind of I can move in them really well. They're really good boots. Before all that happened though, I did trade in my Solomons and I went shopping for a new pair of hiking boots and I ended up on the Oboes. And these are mid, mid high. I think my Solomons were a little bit higher. These are like mid high and you can see there's some wear on these. <laughs> I have been wearing these a lot and I have pretty much decided that these are what I'm wearing on the John Muir Trail. When I bought them and I went out, they were on sale. I think they were like $160 boots and I got them on sale for 99 when I bought them and I went out on some trips and tested them out and decided that I liked them, and we're talking six or seven months ago before I even applied for Merrill, I tested them out and I liked them so much, I went ahead and bought another pair because they were on sale. And I wanted to make sure I had them because boots, they say the, life, the lifespan of boots or shoes are about 500 miles and I'm hiking a thousand. So that means I'm gonna need two pairs of boots on the trail. And I, so with two pairs of boots, I'll have a, another pair sent to me. And like I said, I'm still up in the air, whether I'll have these sent to me or these. I'm kind of thinking like as I get stronger, as my as I build up my, my muscles around my ankles and my feet and my legs, that these might work for me. But right now I think 
my muscles around all my supporting muscles aren't strong enough and that is why I need the extra support of a boot now these oboes are still quite a bit lighter than the Solomons I wore on the John Muir trail so I look forward to you know not being as tired <laughs> uh, all the time because I'm not carrying an extra whatever pound on my back because it's on my feet and for the John Muir trail I did are they good feet or smart feet I did smart feet inserts and I bought some inserts for these boots and I tried them out and actually the the inserts in this boot are so good see these are the oboes the uh, the inserts in this boot are so good that I didn't need them uh, I actually preferred the in this insert over the good feet and they're not good feet I can't remember what they're called super feet I think they're super feet and uh, I so these as is are working great for me what I was thinking I might do is when these start breaking down on the trail which they will you know 180 pounds and a 35 pound pack that's a lot of weight a lot of impact as I hike I was thinking if the upper stays in good shape and doesn't start tearing up getting torn up I'd send myself the super feet and that might help prolong the life of these but we'll see once I get on the trail we'll see how how this all plays out so in the end I really love the trail runners as far as how lightweight they are I just don't feel that I would get enough support with a pack on my back with these um, in fact I wasn't and my my feet were really hurting really bad when I was wearing these I love these though for day hikes when I don't have a heavy pack this is kind of my go-to shoe right now these are really good so they're good for me and again if you're older you've got arthritis if you're you know not 98 pounds <laughs> uh, that might be something that you need to consider not only about just the support in the shoe but how long it's gonna last the more I think the more weight you put on this shoe the faster it's gonna wear right and especially if you're on a budget you're gonna want to get something that's you longer so I don't know these this is just my opinion I'm sure a lot of people have different opinions about it this is just from my experience what I have tried and what I'm thinking and again I'm learning stuff now about my John Muir trail hike and I'm sure when I do another long hike in a you know in the future I'll look back at the decisions I made on this trip and say oh yeah okay I should have done that differently so um, the thing is you know you continue to go forward with the best information and the best decisions you can make in the moment and you tweak things as you go and as you learn so in the end this is my choice my oboes boot you know they're they're heavy oh they're they're definitely heavier <laughs> than the trail runner very I mean look at all the support you know all that support on the ankle all the support um, up here on the upper to really hold my toe in place oh and yes this has a very roomy toe box so again my toes can wiggle around I have done a lot of hiking in these going down hills my my toe isn't jamming into the toe box so hopefully knock on wood knock on wood I won't lose any toenails on this trip and the oboes right now is my choice for boots all right want to talk about socks <laughs> a lot of you have been asking me about socks my favorite socks are right socks and I used to go backpacking with meetup groups and and Sierra Club groups I never really had friends who liked to backpack so I would just sign up and go hiking with people I didn't know and it was always a blast it was always so great and on uh, on one of the trips that I went on I met a guy and he swore by right socks and they have been my favorite hiking sock ever since and here's why number one they're wool I always wear wool socks because they whether they're wet unlike cotton have you ever walked in wet cotton socks they're just soggy and slippery and gross no matter how wet wool gets you just I guess it wicks the moisture away so you just don't feel that sogginess they can be cold they can be wet I think even if they're wet and cold they still somehow like retain the heat in your in your feet and so your toes don't get freezing and there's just a million things I really love about wool I tried this year to look at some alternatives because I do try to stay mostly plant-based in everything uh, you know my gear of course I do have some leather and some wool and some down I tried looking for alternatives I remember a couple years ago I was in 
REI and I had seen hemp, but I was doing my research and it just came back to, I think wool is the best. And what I love about these socks is they are lined. So they're double, you probably can't see, they're double layer, they're lined. And what that does is provides a barrier. So close to your skin to avoid blisters. So you have this lining and a lot of people will buy wool socks and buy liners separately, but these come with liners built in. And I'm gonna tell you, I've never had a blister, ever, ever. I have pretty tough feet though, cause I walk around barefoot a lot, but I have never had a blister. And so these are my right socks, wool, lined, keep my feet warm and comfy. And even when my feet are wet, I don't get blisters. I, I can hike in them. I don't know, I, that's all. I don't really know what else to say about these socks. So I get these at REI. They're not inexpensive. I don't know, 17, $20 a pair. Uh, and I'm probably gonna go through, I, I bought four pair. I'm probably gonna go through more than that on the trail. Although, you know what? I think I went through, I may not. I took two pairs on the John Muir Trail and they were still in good shape after. After 30 days, they were still in good shape. So it'll be interesting to see how long they last wearing them for a thousand miles. That'll, I'll, I'll have to see. They might actually do quite well. And I'm gonna take two pairs with me. One pair I will wear, one pair I will sleep in. And then when the pair that I'm wearing gets really, really dirty, I will wash them out and, and carry them on my pack and then hike in the pair that I have been sleeping in. So I'll rotate them that way. The, then, the clean, then the ones that I cleaned that are on my pack, I will wear to sleep in until I need to switch them around again. Okay. So that is all about footwear and foot care on the Pacific Crest Trail for a thousand mile hike. This is really all I'm gonna be doing to take care of my feet. Other than that, stopping in creeks, plunging them in cold water when I can because they're gonna swell, they're gonna ache. There's just no way around it. When you're hiking a thousand miles with 30, 35 pounds on your back, your feet are gonna hurt. <laughs> That's just a fact of life, especially when you're 51 <laughs> and, uh, and, and not a hundred pounds. So that's it. Stay tuned for a lot more. I'm gonna be doing a lot more information about the gear and, and how it's working while I'm on the trail. So be sure to subscribe. Thanks for hanging with me and I'll see you next time. In the meantime, be happy, be free, and be kind. I'll see you soon.